In this episode, we are going to explore the great state of Missouri. We're gonna stay at a casino right on the Mississippi River. We'll also visit its confluence with the Ohio in Cairo, Illinois. Then back to Missouri, where we'll explore the Ozark Scenic Riverways. We'll see incredible springs. We'll visit an elk conservation area, more beautiful waterfalls, more beautiful springs. Then Branson, Missouri. Table Rock Lake. We'll do a section of historic Route 66. And finally, beautiful Wakanda State Park. I'm riding, 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 riding in my RV, my RV, wherever I want to be. Because I'm free in my RV. Greetings from Carruthersville, Missouri. We were here once before during the great solar eclipse of 2017 trip, in which we actually made a navigational error and ended up here. Not a bad place to end up. They have a casino with an RV park. Century Casino. Lady Luck, I believe it used to be called. Let's see our surroundings from 400 feet above ground. Today, in a sense, marks the beginning of a new chapter in this trip. Shall we call it the Midwest? Even though parts of Missouri are also considered part of the South, we're gonna go with Midwest because we're going to set foot in Illinois and from here we're going to Iowa, Minnesota, North Dakota and beyond. Well, this is my site. I'm not even gonna unhitch or connect the water or the sewer. Let's just get a good night's sleep here on the west bank of the Mississippi. The casino looks like an old riverboat that hasn't sailed for years, but we're not going in. I wonder where this goes. It's a dead end. It goes nowhere. Beautiful trees, though. Mm, I thought that trail would go to the river, but it doesn't. Well, good night. Morning. We're slowly waking up, making some coffee. Check it out. Check out the moon. And here, making some coffee. On the road again! The plan today is to visit the Ozark Scenic Riverways, just west of here. It comes highly recommended, but I don't really have any plans, setting stone or reservations or anything like that. Ooh, a Geo dealership! Remember Geo? I haven't seen one of those in a while. So yeah, as I was saying, all I have is just some recommendations from viewers, and that's all. We're gonna play it by ear. All right, a lot of businesses in this uh, part of Caruthersville here are kind of like, like there's a supermarket here across the across from us that seems to be well, may have been a Walmart at some point, uh, I think. Which reminded me of another place that I wanted to visit in the vicinity here. Uh, let me see how far it is because uh, Cairo, Illinois. I mean, it's an extra hour. I wanted to see because that's the confluence of the Missouri and the Mississippi. And it's supposed to be kind of like a ghost uh, town. Yeah, might as well. I mean, we're not gonna come around uh, this area for a while. Yeah, it's an interstate. Let's do it.
And just like that, I decided to make a detour, which will take us into the land of Lincoln, actually. Once again, crossing the mighty Mississippi. Check it out, it's the Great River Road. We're going into Fort Defiance Park here. It's a nice park. the bridge to Kentucky, which uh, ironically is closed. I say ironically because as of this filming in early August 2020, Kentucky is one of the few states that has issued a 14-day quarantine for visitors from other states. And even though I hear it's not really enforced, I'm gonna stay away from Kentucky this time around. Sorry Cousin Juan in Louisville, uh, I'll visit next year. By the way, very cool to see how they move all these huge barges here on the river. This is it. The Mississippi, the Ohio. Okay, so I couldn't resist. I had to try that dolly zoom effect with the new Mavic 2 zoom. And now, let me show you where we really are. Right here, at the very southern tip of Illinois. The confluence of the muddy Mississippi to the left. Yeah, lots of sediment. And the relatively cleaner Ohio to the right. And you can definitely see it in the water. There's barge coming, and that's, of course, beautiful Kentucky on this absolutely beautiful day. The only time we're gonna see Kentucky on this whole trip, actually. Look at that pusher boat moving the barge upstream. And the beautiful, I mean, beautiful Ohio River. This one is going up the Mississippi. Are those clearance markings on the bridge? Is it possible for the water level to really fluctuate all that much? That's wild. And so is this view. Amazing. How much commerce actually happens on these rivers? Okay, that's far enough. Let's come back. Time to go. There's still so much to see. I want to drive through Cairo, Illinois, also pronounced Cairo, by the way, and it is supposed to be mostly abandoned. And I want to corroborate that. A little bit of a dystopian, post-apocalyptic welcome here, don't you think? Well, at least the church looks good. And actually, this whole part of town here seems to be a little better maintained. Some of it looks like it may just be run down, but some of it, without a shadow of a doubt, has seen better days.
know what kind of economic meltdown happened here, but it seems pretty severe. Look at all this. But otherwise, it would be a pretty cool town. I mean, seems to be. Let's continue. Missouri awaits. Going back over the Mississippi one more time. And back in Missouri we are. And will be for the next few days. This part of Missouri, flat and agricultural, as expected. But I do see what looks like some topography in the distance, so I'm hopeful. I love driving through this part of the country. Where else could you find a billboard advertising seeds? We've got rolling hills and the brown sign I've been looking forward to. Those brown signs, by international convention actually, are erected to direct visitors to points of interest along the way. And our first point of interest is coming up. We're going to stop here at Van Buren, population 819 the gateway to the Ozark National Scenic Riverways. Let's stop by the Visitor's Center. Why do I always get myself into these no-outlet situations with the trailer in tow? I'm telling you. So nice and so knowledgeable, the lady in there, she gave me the map and she told me what to do and where to go and uh, where to see elk and about the campground. I'm going to try and see um, the 200 loop is supposed to be electric. Otherwise, you know, I'll boondock it, I'll rough it for a couple of nights. Let me look for United States Post Office. I'm offline, so I can't do that. What do you in mean you're meantime, offline? You can get directions, make calls and play music. What do you mean you're offline? We have five bars of LTE. I'm telling you, this Google lady sometimes gets on my nerves. Rolling through downtown Van Buren, Missouri, looking for a post office because CDs and stickers must be mailed. We're going to Big Spring Campground on this windy and hilly road. It is one of those first come, first serve, self check in kind of deals. Okay, this is nice. Busy, but nice. Okay, I think this is gonna work because the last uh, reservation left today on the 5th so it should be available in theory right let's go let's let me go to the payment box yeah, the pay station is, is farther than I remember this is such a beautiful place I think I'm gonna go back uh, in the car okay, so it is $19 per night for a, for an electric site and that's what we're gonna get well this is very nice here only electric though, but I have plenty of water, so shouldn't be an issue. We're gonna go for a little hike. This, by the way, is the Big Spring Campground here at the, at the Ozarks. This here is the, the non-electric campground. And as you can see, it's completely empty today. I think this is the trailhead. There's supposed to be lots of elk around here. the current river yes this is the current river which we will be following as we explore the scenic riverways also jack's fork in fact there are 134 miles of rivers in this area it would be nice to have a boat here or at the very least a kayak or a canoe 
It is absolutely beautiful. I'm just gonna drive to the big spring area. Don't really feel like hiking anymore. This is the largest spring in Missouri and one of the largest in the whole world, with a daily average flow of 286 million gallons. From far away, it almost seems to be like a waterfall. It is apparently one of those places where a lot of people come to, take, uh, to get their picture taken. That. We're getting the, the photo shoot going on back there. But this is really cool. There's a marker there. That's a lot of water coming from under the ground. It really is. It really is a spring. I mean, the water is coming out of nowhere, out of the, the earth, really. Let's see, I, I forgot to bring the, the trail map, but this seems to be a trail here, so let's, uh, let's go a little further, see where it leads. So far, pleasantly surprised by Missouri. Hey, look at that, look, look up there, wow. I think this area has to be one of Missouri's best kept secrets. I mean, at least I certainly didn't know about it until very recently. This is truly amazing. And it is only our first day here in this area. Yep, very impressive. I'm gonna start heading back. It is getting late. This is amazing. I had never seen anything quite like it. I liked it. I liked it. Well, tomorrow we'll continue exploring. Hmm, good morning. Cool morning here, 60 degrees Fahrenheit, 7.25 a.m. Central Time, and we're gonna try to do the early bird thing, or, although we're not that early anymore. But um, the, the lady at the visitor center said you could go see some elk. Look at that morning fog. And we have deer. Yes, this is the best time of the day to see wildlife, wherever you go. US uh, 60 here in, um, in Van Buren, and we're going towards the town of Wainona. And this is where the pavement ends and the dirt road begins. Six more miles until we get to our destination, which is Peck Ranch, which is a wildlife conservation area where you can see elk and many other animals, I've been reliably informed. Here we are. I believe I'm the only human here today. Hello there. 
We've got some elk. We've got some wild turkey too. Oh yeah, sure, by all means, use the road. Y'all know Thanksgiving is coming, right? Let's explore some of the narrower roads that branch out from the main loop. But I presume most of the wildlife must be hiding somewhere. Here we go, we got some more deer. Bye guys. Our next stop, Rocky Falls Shut-In. It is called Rocky Falls Shut-In and apparently Shut-In is a it's a type of river, and that's how they call them here in the Ozarks, which is confined to a, to a small space. Oh, look at the butterfly. Hello, butterfly. Woo. Here we are, and oh, wow. Beautiful waterfalls. And it is not very crowded today. Apparently, it is a popular swimming hole, and let me tell you, I am tempted, but I did not come prepared. Besides, the water is probably cold. Let's see how cold. Yeah. yeah, that water is pretty chilly. I, I was thinking of, of bringing my, my bathing suit later on, but... It is really beautiful here. I, I had no idea. There, that gives you a sense of scale. All right, let's go. I guess there's a trail that goes to, to the falls, but I don't know exactly where it is. It is certainly not marked, so we're gonna continue. Well, I know it's not the most efficient thing to do because I'm kind of close to the other springs and points of interest in the area. But I'm gonna go back to the campground, take a break, have a light lunch because uh, I had a very light breakfast and uh, my brain is still kind of the, in the Eastern time zone. So by the time I get there, it's gonna be noon. And oh, there's a, I wonder what that road goes. Should I, should I not, nah, I'm not gonna. Um, and uh, as I said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna soak my red kidney, kidney beans. Yes, tonight I am making Cuban style red kidney beans, frijoles colorados, from scratch. Well, it's a pretty hot day now, and this is what we're gonna do. And uh, and the lady at the visitor centers, she highlighted, you know, the highlights. And uh, this is where we were today at the at the Rocky Falls. But we're gonna go all the way to Blue Spring here, and then go all the way west to Ali Spring. That's the plan, anyway. And uh, we'll see what else we find along the way. Let's go to the Blue Spring area, and apparently it gets flooded around here, crossing the current river. This is supposed to be another beautiful spring, but first, let's stop here by Powder Mill Campground. Yes, the campground is right here next to the current river, which, I must say, today has a pretty good current. I wonder if that's why they named it that. This is very nice, but I think these places are much more enjoyable with some kind of watercraft. Hmm, what is this? I guess it's not very deep and that would be a river access on the other side. Oh, so many butterflies, look at that. Oh, wow.
Blue Spring, two and a half miles on this dirt road. It's a trail. I hope it's not too bad because I, I, I forgot to bring my, my hiking shoes. It's not too bad. Well, it is getting worse and pretty steep. What I'm gonna say is this Blue Spring better be worth it. Well, here, according to the pamphlet, it is the Blue Spring here is uh, Missouri's deepest. Missouri's deepest. If the Statue of Liberty stood at the bottom, her torch would be underwater. It's a, it's a half mile trail, so shouldn't be too bad, even though I didn't bring my hiking shoes. So let's do it. All right, here we are at the trailhead. There's the Colorado, there's the bathroom, and there's the trail. Maybe there's some information there at the, at the trailhead. And there is a picnic area over there. We have an emergency phone number, except that there's no cell phone signal here. <laughs> okay. There's a very faded sign with all the information about how the, the spring came to be. There's the river right there, the current river. I wonder if you would be allowed to boondock over there. That would be cool. And as I said earlier, the way to do this is with a small watercraft. That's probably this place called Well Hollow. More research shall go into this. Entering the Blue Spring natural area. It's very beautiful. I definitely should have brought my hiking shoes, which serves me well for not reading the map before coming. <laughs> I hear water, rushing water. We must be close. There you go. Some information about the spring. You can pause if you want. Here we go. Even the temp temperature is cooler here, right next to the water. And we made it to Blue Spring. It definitely has a unique color. say that was worth the perilous drive and the short hike over here for sure and uh, I've been taking some pictures and it's uh, amazing what translates well in still photography and what doesn't some things are better on video and some some things are just you just can't replicate uh, your eye sees it but then the camera it's not 3d no I don't know it, it, it's 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 a mystery in a sense Oh, let's head back. I gotta figure out how to go there. I would love to figure out how to boondock over there. There has to be a way. Oh, there's a trail that goes right. Let's, let's do it. Let's go. Let's come down here. Wow, cool view. Let me tell you something. I really like this place. This is called Alley Spring and Mill, so let's explore. Alley Spring. We came through here, across that bridge, we're parked right here. So Alley Spring and Alley Mill, that's where we're going and should be right around there. 
I wonder what that building is. Oh, a schoolhouse. Let's check it out. And uh, apparently they have preserved it as it would have looked in the past. It was actually moved here from north of Eminence in 1971. It was a nice uh, little trip through time there, going into the, into the school. So I was saying, look at the flagpole. It's like very rustic. All right, so let's go into the main attraction over there. Please do not wade or fish or swim. Ah, oh, man, good thing I forgot my bathing suit. Oh my God, look at this, how pretty. This spring, by the way, doesn't empty onto the current river, but to its largest tributary, Jack's Fork. And here's the famous Red Mill, Alley Mill. Very modern for its time, it was very large, had steel rollers and it harnessed the energy from the spring by using some kind of turbine, which gave the miller the ability to control the speed. Are these the milling machines, perhaps? That must be the gate that regulated how much water went into the turbine. And the view downstream is just beautiful. A lot of water under the mill. 81 million gallons a day, to be exact. Let's do the Spring Branch Trail. I have only one explanation for this. These people want to keep it a secret and they don't want anybody to come here. I mean, this place is totally under the radar, this whole area. I'm so glad I came. Wow, I'm so glad I can share it with you. Check out all these butterflies, I've seen them all over the place. I just realized that it's like a, like a loop trail, so the, 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 the car is right there. Uh, so, I think your brain can only process so much beauty in one day, so let's quit while we're ahead. Go back to the RV, make some beans, and, uh, and tomorrow we go to Branson, Branson, Missouri. Here we go, carrots, green pepper, chorizo, smoked pork shank. Let's remove the casing on that chorizo and slice it. Chopping an onion, uh, let's do some garlic too. And hello 
twist and part next time, you guys. Slightly longer cable would be nice. I'm not saying, I'm just saying. Funny thing, I have like 10 of these cables back in Miami, you know, of different lengths and gauges, but not here. Here we go. Let's remove this. And we're gonna set it on saute on uh, more. Doesn't matter how long because we're gonna change it to pressure before that, but on saute all the way. Chorizo. Let's add the pork shank. Let's add the onions and the peppers and the garlic. And I keep forgetting this instant pot is a lot smaller than the one I have at home. I'm gonna have to remove one of the pork shanks because I'm running out of room here very quickly. I'm gonna add my, my cooking wine, not too much, but just a little bit. A little bit of salt. So not too much because this stuff is salty already. Just a little tad of cumin. This, oops, maybe I overdid it. This stuff doesn't really require a lot of cumin, but it does require a little bit of oregano. And you know, paprika, although though, that, that Spanish chorizo already has a lot of paprika, I'm gonna add just a little bit more because it wouldn't be me if you didn't have paprika. And I'm gonna add that saffron. Let's add our pre-soaked beans. What is that marking on the thing that says? I think that's pretty much it. We shouldn't fill it up any more than that. Eh, maybe a little bit more, but just... And now we're, we're gonna uh, fill it up with water to that uh, marking and uh, I'll put this in a bag and put it on the fridge and tomorrow, when we get to Branson, I can do another batch. We'll add the water, cook it for about an hour at high pressure and that's it. Oh, I forgot a major ingredient. Just a little bit of tomato sauce. Just a tiny, not too much. Mm. Ah, who closes these things? Who's FaceTiming? I don't know that number. I think it looks good. Of course, this would normally have potatoes and carrots, but they didn't fit. I'm gonna add a lot of that ham because that's gonna be my protein for today, you know? All right, see you guys tomorrow. Well, today we have a, about, about a three hour drive to Branson. It is a momentous occasion. The Colorado has reached 50,000 miles in less than two years. It's always always good to know, to, to see, like, uh, get up the, the highway for a little bit and see what the towns look like. And this is not just any town. Continue for five miles. Um, yeah, look at that tiny uh, post office, that's like like that one and the, Ever the Everglades, almost. Uh, the reason why we're here, the, this is the Laura Ingalls uh, home, uh, not where she, where she lived as a child, uh, the, the inspiration for her books, but um, this is where she actually wrote uh, most of the house, Little House on the Prairie books. This is actually the Laura Ingalls Wilder Memorial Highway going into the town of Mansfield. Coming up here to the left, Rocky Ridge Farm, where the prodigious author lived from 1896 until her death in 1957. It was here that she wrote the famous Little House on the Prairie series. We're gonna continue and tell you why. Besides, I'm not like in a muse museum mo mood today. If I had like plenty of time, I would have done it. But uh, when I get to Branson, I have a bunch of stuff to do. And today we have the, the live stream, so I want to get prepared for that. 
All right, I think I'm going to stop here for a few minutes, take a break, and then we continue towards Branson. We're parked in front of a mural depicting Rocky Ridge Farm. And here we've got some of the old downtown buildings. This was just a quick stop here in Mansfield. There, the park across the street has a bust of Laura Ingalls Wilder, the town's most famous former resident for sure. Let me tell you something, busy little town here. Um, well, let's continue. We're a little over an hour away from Branson, Missouri. Check it out! We must be in Amish country. Here we start seeing all these billboards advertising the many Branson attractions and all of a sudden I realize coming here may have been a mistake. These are not the kinds of things I want to be doing during a pandemic. It looks like it would be a lot of fun during normal times, just not in the summer of 2020. It is a beautiful drive on this final stretch between Springfield and Branson with all these hills, all these part of the Ozark Mountains. Here we are, Branson, and we're gonna stay at the Lakeside RV Park, which I believe it is owned by the city. Sites are a little tight, but it is very centrally located, and they even have a trolley stop. After all this, I realized I'm backwards. It is actually a pull-through site. Yeah, the city is trimming some trees, so not the quietest of afternoons. How about a quick flight? They have this marina here and several floating docks where people can fish. Very nice for a city park. Can't wait to explore more tomorrow. Let's go for a walk around the park. This is actually very nice. And there comes the trolley. It wouldn't be a proper RV park if it didn't have a train track right next to it, right? Oh no, we've got rain coming. of champions. Well, good morning. Just making sure the door is locked. All right, yesterday when I arrived, this park actually didn't give me like the best impression, but because, you know, it's very tightly, we are very tightly packed together here, which is expected for a, for a city RV park in a sense. 
but apparently we are like right there you know right uh, in the middle of things downtown so that might make up for it and uh, also it may have been like uh, if I wanted to if I wanted this trip to be like the social distance trip <laughs> Uh, you know, it may have, might have been a bad idea to come to Branson because this is Turning a very touristy to town. Willie Drive, Branson Landing Boulevard. We're gonna try to stick to nature as much as possible, but first, there's the Branson mural. At some point before we leave, I would love to take a selfie with it, but we'll see. You know, expectations are a funny thing. I didn't know what to expect when we came here, but somehow it wasn't this. Yeah, I th I'm thinking Branson was perhaps an, an unnecessary detour here. Yeah, let's try and do something that involves nature. And I was reading online about things to do in Branson and there is this waterfall trail. It is supposed to be right here, next to the Westgate Resort. Yeah, the parking lot is in that industrial area over there and um, apparently it's right there yeah and there's the west gate but yeah this is it this is the, the waterfall trail so let's do it our luck with waterfalls this trip has been hit or miss especially at the beginning but i have high hopes Perhaps wishful thinking. It's pretty cool. For this. I mean, it's an urban trail. This is like in the middle of the city. A little slippery. I definitely should have brought my hiking shoes. I wonder how this got here. <laughs> you will really have to go out of your way to, to have this old washing machine here. I don't see a whole lot of water rushing through, so I'm thinking this waterfall trail might be a bust. But hey, it is the journey that matters, right? Ladies and gentlemen, I introduce to you the waterfall. They've got to be kidding me. I mean, it is beautiful, but there must be a drought or something. It is technically a waterfall, right? It's, if that is the only waterfall, I'm gonna be disappointed. But maybe there's more coming this way. It's, it's very wet and slippery, that's the only thing. But... I wonder if they are as flabbergasted as I am. Don't be fooled by the apparent wilderness. We're right next to the resort. Doesn't seem very remote now, does it? <laughs> That looks promising. Okay, this wasn't so bad after all. It almost looks more like a fountain than a waterfall. Actually, yeah, it is. This pond here is like a, it's like a dam. It's somewhat artificial, as you all can see. But still, you know, not the most uh, roaring of cascades, but. Oh, check it out. These people at the resort, they have a view. All right, let's continue. Let's continue going upstream. Maybe there's uh, another even more impressive waterfall coming up. Let's walk a little more just for the exercise, but I think this is as good as it gets. Oh, wow. Check it out. This is not bad. Ah, 
Yeah, remember the washing machine? It's pretty cool. Let's check out Hollister here real quick and historic Downing Street, also known as the English Village. It is lovely, actually. Let's park, if only for a few minutes. Very nice, much quieter than Branson on the other side of the river. Scenic view, yeah, let's check it out. Definitely, they were not kidding. We can see the White River, Table Rock Dam in the distance, and the notably higher water level of Table Rock Lake. It is, shall I say, a most commanding view and the highlight of Branson so far. The castle like building perched atop the hill is none other than Chateau on the Lake Resort. Let's continue towards Table Rock Lake State Park. This was actually on the short list of places to camp, but it is the weekend. How nice, even on this somewhat cloudy day, everybody enjoying the lake. Let's go for a walk on the Lakeshore Trail. Hmm, here's the boat ramp. This is almost as entertaining to watch as someone backing in the trailer at the campground for the first time. Okay, I won't be rude. Let's continue. Ah, never mind. I just can't help myself. There's a trail here that goes down to the water. This is so nice. It is choppy, probably in part due to the wake from all the boats. I betcha it makes for a bumpy canoe ride. Actually, a pontoon boat is probably the way to go here to spend the day on the water. Oh, that's gotta be that showboat Branson Bell. They do dinner cruises with entertainment. Supposed to be really good. Yeah, when I grow up, I want a pontoon boat. Or even better, a friend with one. This, apparently this is the, the like the, the local escape from the sweltering heat here and uh, look at that I guess I bet you that's the the table rock and this here to the right must be the campground. It doesn't even seem to be full. Yeah, next time I have to make sure I make reservations here way ahead of time. Mm -hmm. 
This here to the left is called Peninsula Lookout on Moonshine Beach. Let's stop for a few minutes to enjoy the views. Table Rock Lake here was created in the mid to late 1950s after the construction of Table Rock Dam. So yes, it is artificial, and its original purpose was flood control on the White River and hydroelectric power, but it is definitely also a super popular lake for recreational activities. Let's go up to one of these hills to get a view from the higher ground. Let's stop here. This seems to be like a real estate office for some new development down there called Nantucket. But actually, the views from the parking lot are pretty spectacular. There's the dam. There's Moonshine Beach right there. There's the, the showboat. The little island in the lake. And there's the chateau on the lake. Hello there, excuse me. Oh, look at that. That colorful development down there must be that Nantucket they are trying to sell here. Let's go check it out. It is cute. Apparently it's like a resort, a timeshare kind of deal. Something I've learned to stay away from, but people buy into them all the time, so I assume it might work for some people. I'm just gonna drive around the lake a little longer, but I don't think we're gonna stop anywhere. Well, I think we've had enough fun for one day, even though we haven't really done much. But tomorrow? Tomorrow is another day and we have a long drive ahead of us. And we're back in Branson. I'm just starting to realize what a great campground this really is. Right here right next to the White River. And we've got all these folks here hanging out all the time. Lots of them. This would be a perfect way to end our day, except that I still have to cook that second batch of red kidney beans. Don't tell me you forgot about those. I'll chop an onion. Salt. Pepper. Our two leftover pork shanks. This time we're gonna do some celery and some carrots. Before I slice the carrots, let's add some of that vino seco cooking wine and the rest of the beans. Water. I'm out of real garlic, so this will have to do. Cumin, just a tad. Oregano, you know, the usual stuff and lots of paprika, since I'm out of that Spanish chorizo sausage. A little bit of tomato sauce, and now we chop the carrots. High pressure for an hour and we should be good. Probably not as great as the one we did a couple of days ago, but I'm sure it's still pretty good. Again, 
big faithful will coming this way. Um, let me make sure that everything's buttoned up. I think we're good. Well, today, uh, by the way, it's really hot here in... Head west on Boxcar Willie Drive. Hot and humid in this part of uh, Missouri, here in Branson. I mean, totally different compared uh, to, to the other part of Missouri we were. I don't know if it is the area or just that the climate changed. But man, it's hot and humid. Even at 9 a.m., 9.21, I'm 21 minutes behind schedule, which is not bad In for 300 me, feet, turn left onto Boxcar Willie Drive, Branson Landing Boulevard. Oh, we're gonna turn do left onto Boxcar Willie Drive, Branson Landing Boulevard. We're gonna do a little bit of Route 66, because that's what you do. I've never done the, the Missouri portion of Route 66. And we're gonna go, um, we're going to Cuba. Goodbye, Branson. Barely knew ya. We will return one of these days when the circumstances change and we're able to enjoy you properly and find out everything you have to offer. But now, the journey must continue. We are going to do a section of Route 66, which around here goes almost parallel to I-44, and then onto Iowa. I just love this drive here on US 65 North, coming out of Branson with all these rolling hills. Very cool road, fun to drive, perhaps even better if you're not towing. It is kind of hard to keep up with all these ups and downs. We are now on the Mother Road, historic Route 66. Part of Route 66 not all that interesting, and it's, it runs parallel to uh, to I-44. So I don't know. Probably after our next point of interest, I'm just gonna take I-44. To be honest. Not a whole lot going on in this area, but here in Marshfield, there's something we want to see. This is the birthplace of astronomer Edwin Hubble, responsible a long, long time ago for the discovery of other galaxies far, far away from our own Milky Way. They were originally believed to be nebula, and if the name rings a bell, well, yeah, the Hubble Space Telescope was named after him. And here in Marshfield, they have a replica. Here we are, Route 66. And the reason we've stopped here is that. Here we have it, a one-quarter scale model of the Hubble telescope that has been orbiting the Earth since 1990. It is very cool to see, actually, even if it's not life-size. Here, in front of the Webster County Courthouse, in sleepy downtown Marshfield. Although, to be fair, it is Sunday morning. I am sure it would be a lot livelier at a different time, on a different day. Here's a memorial dedicated to Webster County veterans. It's a cool looking gun, if you ask me. We continue, although we are going to use I-40 this time <laughs> because um, otherwise we'll never make it. And apparently Route 66, except for this uh, few um, points of interest like the Hubble telescope, which was super cool. Uh, it isn't really all that... Um, In 400 feet, turn right onto West Jackson Street. And I totally lost my train of thought.
check it out. It is the world's largest gift store. Isn't that awesome? Sixty-six for gas. That's some kind of bargain. It's super crowded, though. We're gonna go back into uh, Route 66. Turn right onto State Highway F, then turn left onto Historic US 66 East. There you go. You're not gonna believe where we're going. Cuba. Who would have thought? Go back to Cuba. As you probably know by now, I was born in the island of Cuba, and I thought it would be appropriate to visit its Missourian namesake. Now look to the left. If you blink, you're gonna miss it. It is the world's second largest rocking chair. And we missed it. I could have parked too. Well, we missed it. It was supposed to be back there, and I didn't stop. I don't see anywhere to... It was supposed to be the world's largest rocking chair. Cuba here is actually famous for its murals and a particular barbecue place. I don't know, but I get a feeling we may have missed a couple of the murals along the way because I didn't see that many. Well, at the very least, I'm gonna take a selfie with the sign, but first, there's that famous Missouri Hicks barbecue, and it looks like there may be oversized parking here to the right. You know what? I don't think this is gonna work. This place is packed, and it's gonna be like um, an incredibly long wait. No, this is not gonna work. Let's continue. Back someday. You see, I'm gonna leave St. Louis, I'm gonna leave in Missouri without eating barbecue, but it is what it is. As I said, at least let me take a selfie with the sign. Well, from here on, it is going to be nearly non stop. We're basically out of time. Four long hours later, we are arriving at Wakanda State Park, near LaGrange, Missouri. All right, Wakanda State Park. Yeah, excuse the, the Berkey filter is making noise and falling apart. Basic site, reservable site, oops. Let's see what this is. Hookup reservable or register and pay fee at the area. It's a register campers only, no, they use quiet hours 10 pm to 6 am. Sounds the plan. Let's see, site 103, I'm supposed to be 100, 114. Awesome. Definitely. 
one of the better campgrounds we've ever stayed at. Definitely have to write this one down. Look what I just discovered. We have our own little private beach here. Just for us. Actually, it's not cold at all. I was really tempted to, to jump in the water, but it's kind of murky. And there's the, the warning sign that they may be, you know, debris, you know, unacceptable bacteria levels, who knows? So I'm not gonna jump in, but let me tell you, yeah, I like to launch a kayak, or maybe if I was into fishing, maybe fishing, I don't know. But definitely this, this uh, campground is top 10 of all places I've been, I've been to. I'd say almost in, pretty much in the whole country. So, um, I would definitely be returning here and I could spend the whole week here. I mean, we have full hookups, so I could spend the whole week here and the, the, there's Hannibal is very close. So we could visit like all the historic Mark Twain stuff. And um, yeah, what a, what a great way to say goodbye to Missouri. Because tomorrow we're saying goodbye, but I'm definitely coming, coming back to this place. Maybe even on, on the way back from this trip. Yeah. <laughs> what a great discovery. Uh, by the way, thank you, Benjamin, of uh, Gizer at the Wheel for, for discovering this. Yes, it was from John Benjamin, Gizer at the Wheel, that I learned about this place. He posted something on Facebook and I said, let me add this to my map. And uh, I'm glad I did. I am pleasantly surprised. Remember, site 103 for next time. Although, all these sites here next to the lake are probably good. hungry, so I'm just gonna grill some pork chops. With that, another day comes to an end. Let's add some stickers to our map.
It is time to go. Well, I've been uh, almost a whole week here in the Show Me State. And uh, all I gotta say is, uh, show me more. I really liked uh, what I've seen. And uh, can't wait to come back. Today we're going into Iowa. It is the Mark Twain Casino. <laughs> well, yeah, they are definitely taking advantage of Mark Twain's legacy around here, with good reason. And I know, I know, we're so close to Hannibal. Mark Twain's boyhood home, the inspiration for Tom Sawyer, Huckleberry Finn, and so many others. We were there briefly last year as part of an unplanned detour, and we'll be back again, I promise. But now, Iowa awaits. And Minnesota, North Dakota, Montana, Idaho. Let me tell you, the summer of 2020 road trip is not even halfway there yet. Someone recommended this RV park here in Canton, and I'm just gonna stop by real quick. Maybe we can stay here on the way back. It is called Mississippi Park, $20 a night with water and electric. They have a garbage dumpster and a sewer dump station. Kind of honor system, you write them a check and drop it in the box. And I believe you can also call the police department to make a reservation. They have this picnic area here and the playground. Yeah, we're definitely staying here on the way back, if the route brings us this way. Here's the sign with all the info. Let me take a picture. As we cross the Des Moines River, we are now in Iowa, but more about that on the next episode. Until then, thank you so much for watching and see you on the road.